There's a really good article out today on Vox called How the Self-Care Industry Made Us So Lonely. It touches on so many of the aspects that we cover on Conspirituality about what health actually entails. As the author Ale Volpe writes, self-care really began as a community endeavor. It was radical to think that taking care of yourself in certain communities was a political action. And that's totally right. How many times have I said on the podcast that the influencers we cover never really talk about the social determinants of health? That is the idea that health is as dependent on the community and environment that you live in as it is on genetics and lifestyle habits. All of these factors matter when we're discussing health. It's just that the wellness industry has evolved to focus on individual practices because those are the easiest to monitor. You're not going to make money lobbying the government to try to get clean drinking water into your community. I especially love that she cited the Black Panthers, who famously instituted free food programs for children and free health care clinics in their communities, because that's a way of making sure everyone is healthy and it is a political act. They're not the only community that's done that. In the late 19th and early 20th century, Chinese immigrants on the West Coast would create apothecaries to care for the entire community. So you would go for your medicine right next to where you would go to play your board games and talk gossip with the community. But this whole article also hints at that right-wing crossover with wellness that we've been tracking for over four years now on Conspirituality. The right regularly talks about the bootstraps mentality and why the individual is responsible for their own destiny. And there's really nothing to back that up except for free market ideologies. Which is exactly what we need to get away from when it comes to healthcare in America if we want to actually care for everyone. So the article is framed around the loneliness epidemic, which is a real problem, but also how it's tied into consumer driven self care. And what's the solution? There's no one. And that's another red flag when it comes to wellness influencers because they're often promising that their one product or service is going to fix a range of things or that there's one cause to a range of problems like leaky cut causing most chronic diseases. If they get you to believe that, they can sell you a whole bunch of products to address that problem. So just as there's no one problem, there's no one solution, but I do like when cities offer infrastructure to try to help people not be so lonely. For example, here in Portland, there's something called Pedal Palooza. And over the next four months, there's going to be over 800 group bike rides. None of them are about competition. They're all about getting together on bicycles for different themed rides. Now, is that a healthcare solution? Not particularly, but could it help with loneliness? Absolutely, because there's something about connecting with other people in a real way that really matters for our health. And the best part about Petapalooza is all the events are free. So as I always say, watch what they say and then watch what they sell. When the incentives for healthcare are aligned into a sales funnel, you know there's probably a problem somewhere along the line. And getting to the root cause of loneliness is not an easy endeavor, but I will say it's one that the wellness industry really is not servicing at this time.